Mike? What are you doing up this late? I I just I couldn't sleep and I, I noticed that you weren't in the top bunk, so I just I thought I'd come down here to the Christmas tree and just kinda look for you and what are you what are you doing over there? Oh, I was I had to go to the bathroom and uh I saw that one of the light bulbs on the tree was out, so I was just replacing it. Oh, okay. Well, I, I still can't sleep. Oh well why is that? I'm just too excited. Excited for what? For Santa. Oh, I see. I just, I can't sleep when he's coming here, you know? I'm just too excited for it. No, I, I see, I see. How about this? You come sit down here by the fire. I'll get you a warm cup of milk, and you can have one cookie. One cookie? And I'll read you a bedtime story. A bedtime story? Oh my gosh. About what? Well, this story takes place in a galaxy far, far away. And it's about an aqualish smuggler who's misunderstood, and finds himself in a sticky situation in a bar on the sandy planet of Tatooine. Tatooine. All right. T'was the night before Tuesday when all through the bar stirred creatures from places, some near and some far. The lights were dimmed low by were the bartender in hopes that it would hide the grime and the blender. Vikran Dan and his band played tunes that were funky while well, smugglers and traders dealt ships that were junky. Dr. Avazin drank deeply and I in my stool had just got back from Jeddah and were playing it cool. When from behind the counter there arose such a clatter, I glanced up from my drink to see what was the matter. Barkeep was upset that some droids came in a few paces. To be perfectly honest, I find him a bit racist. The droids left their master without too much fuss. More drinks were then poured as drunk scum filled their guts. When, what to my wondering ear should transpire? But the doc making threats, his anger a fire. Then a little old man, so lively and quick, he took off my arm. God damn it, what a dick. then went silent. See, the band had stopped playing. On the floor all stumpy was my good arm there laying. No bowling, no boating, no tennis or wood splitting. No golfing, no cooking, no fencing or knitting. My retirement flashed before me as my right arm did fall. Then they dashed away, dashed away to the end of the hall. The wound had caught her eyes before the saber's light waned. I took another drink, my eyes wet from pain. To a corner table with the Wookiee they flew, with a pocket full of credits and Han Solo too. And then, as expected, I heard from the door the clanking and hissing of a stormtrooper or more. As I threw back my head and finished my brew, I half expected lasers to light up their crew. They would have deserved it, for ruining my figure, but they slipped through the crowd and I had some more liquor. Han Solo looked happy as he slapped the hairy one's back. Really my neck. Twelve parsecs my ass, good for nothing hack. Yet his eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry. He sent the Wookiee away and then sipped down his sherry. He was about to leave and stood out of his chair to find Greedo the Rodian standing just there. He backed away slowly, this meeting clearly unplanned. My sympathies drained, so I lent him no hand. I considered my options, my career now in shambles. To continue smuggling and dealing was a hell of a gamble. Without my strong arm, I'm not much of a fighter. I toyed with the thought of becoming a screenwriter. I laughed just a little, the reality looming. Things would be much harder as far as personal grooming. See, the worst of it all is that the doc could have fixed it. But this was his fault, and he bit the biscuit. He laid on the ground for a long time thereafter. Another loud noise. No more Rodian laughter. Sorry about the mess. Said Solo as he walked out of sight. Tab out for Baba. I too left for the night. It was still light out as I walked through the street. Thankful I was that I still had my feet.
listening to this very special holiday episode of Man the Fodder. The story was written and performed by me, Jacob Tender, and produced by Mike Comite. Yippee! The Night Before Christmas, which the story was based off of, was written by Clement Clark Moore a really long time ago. The show notes for this episode can be found at banthefodder.fm slash episodes slash 15. You can find us on Twitter with the handle banthefodderfm and individually as Jacob Tender and Mike Comite. Happy holidays, everyone. Yeah, yeah, like a like confessional, I guess. Okay. It's like Jerry Seinfeld. Larry David, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I might have been racist. I might have been racist, yeah. <laughs> okay.